Today I'm going to tell, uh, talk about the virtue of selfishness. I have given this lecture before, but that was a few years ago. <laughs> and if you're not aware, a lot of my lectures are inspired by what Archangel Michael has uh, channeled down through Rana Herman. And one of these lectures is that particular lecture as well. And um, they're inspired. Doesn't mean I don't give my own little twist on it. So it's not exactly, but it's inspired. I never thought about talking about the virtues of selfishness. And then once you, s because every time you think about selfishness, you think about legacy. A negative thing. Yeah. yeah. A negative. And this is a problem we have. Everything we think about is the negative first. Isn't it amazing how we always think about the negative first? <laughs> when we think about it, I, I mean, just, uh, it's really amazing. Somebody could have done 10 wonderful things and you really appreciate them. But they do one thing that's not right. All of a sudden, that's all you remember. Isn't that amazing? We do that with the kids as well, with our loved ones as well. We remember, we remember what is negative more than what we remember. We, and the problem is that we expect the positive. Well. If I expect the positive, if I have that mindset to expect the positive, that means I do not need to work on the positive. They automatically come, which is incorrect. You have to work on being positive. You cannot expect yourself to become positive the same way you can't expect yourself to be negative. You have to make a decision on what you wish to be, OK? So to expect people to behave, and they behave 90% of the time, or 99, and that 1% they don't behave, you'll remember them forever. So on your, yeah, so. Now. The principle behind this lecture is the virtue of selfishness is you cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you do not have. And what is the purpose in our life? Our purpose is to share to be with others, to share the joys, to share the sorrows, to share everything. And, and if we are radiant beings, which I want you to all be, then when you share that, you are uplifting not only your small environment, you're uplifting the entire globe. Because remember what I have said before, every thought you have, never leaves the planet. It is there all the time. Every thought I have is always present. <coughs> and people of similar thoughts tap onto similar thoughts. And since we have an abundance <coughs> of negative thoughts, it is so easy to one negative thought, and all of a sudden you tap into all those other thoughts that other people have had. So any time that you become 
or you make an effort to become a, a beautiful individual that you really are, you are uplifting the entire humanity because you're bringing out thoughts and energy into a field that people can tap into. Because nothing else on this planet is, everything is but energy. There's nothing else but energy. Your energy, your thoughts are energy, your feelings are energy, everything is energy. Okay. And you were created with these wonderful, unique gifts. And you, when you decided to come to this incarnation, you decided to take some unique gifts with you. And it is your duty to find them on this planet. It is your duty to find these unique gifts. And when you find the unique gifts, then it's your duty to share. Because you can't be selfish. Aha. Uh -huh. But I'm talking about the virtues of selfishness. <laughs> so I'm contradicting. I've been thinking about you. Okay? There is always a war going on between your ego self and your soul self. Now the ego self you have brought with you he or she is not a bad thing. Some, the ego self is supposed to assist you in creating life here on earth. Your personality and everything that you have projected is usually just your ego self. And the problem is that the ego self does not want you to rely on the soul self. It wants to take power. And when we talk about the virtues of selfishness, we talk about developing our soul self beauty, our, our gifts that we have come with to share with humanity. And so you have to start being selfish with yourself in promoting those and allowing the ego to step back. Because the ego is going to be the one that is going to be demanding to take over. We have given too much power. That's like not training a child and the child then trains the parents. <laughs> it happens many times. Okay? But once you train, and we haven't trained the ego to be where it belongs to be. We have allowed it to take over. The ego is supposed to be a servant of the soul. And without the ego, we cannot destroy the ego and we shouldn't want to destroy the ego. But the ego is the one that has created imbalance within us. The ego is the one that has created uh, addictions, negative traits. And, and we wish to work and come back to balance and harmony. And so how do we do that? And I've spoken about this many times. You have to look at yourself and love yourself, even with your imperfections. And take those imperfections and love them away. Accept them for who they are, but ask them to please leave because they are not serving you anymore. To reject them, to push them away, to say they are no good, you are actually giving them energy. So when you start criticizing yourself, you are actually promoting what you're criticizing. This is a, something that people are not realizing. So when you say, constantly say uh, something like, I can't, give, yeah, I can't give up smoking, you won't be able to. Or I'm no good because I smoke. Or I'm no good because I'm addicted to sugar. I'm no good because I'm addicted to this. It doesn't work. Because uh, the minute you say that, 
the minute you put yourself down, two things happen. One, you give it power. Two, you steal your own integrity and energy. You never want to steal your integrity and energy. And when you put yourself down, you steal your own integrity and energy. That's like a boss coming to you and say, your job has not been good and yet you try to do your very best. How do you feel? But if the boss comes and says, look, you're doing a fantastic job, but I think we could do this a little bit better, how would you feel? You will feel like you could do a little bit better. Very simple. What you don't want done to other people, you don't do to yourself. But who's the most critical person about yourself? You. You are the most critical individual about yourself. All right? Love your imperfections free. This is what Archangel Michael teaches. Love your imperfections free. With other words, they have served you. You took them on because you needed them at a certain time, and then they stayed at the time you needed them. They served you, but it's time to let them go because it is time for us to become who we really are. Who are you? You are the most beautiful flower that can possibly exist. Every single one of us is unique, and no one is better than the other. Some people have reached more, uh, have opened their flower bud more than others. That's all. But everybody has that flower, and it's all sitting in a bud, and we talk about it all the time, because that's how I see people. I see people as the most beautiful bed of flowers, but some of them are just little bulbs like that. And some have come full bloom. Some have come full bloom. And when they come full bloom, what happens? The aroma is delicious. The eyesight is delicious. You just love it. And they come in beautiful colors. And then uh, when you get a bunch of them together, they make a beautiful symphony. Okay? So that's... And so know that everyone is, has the same potential. And no one is better than the other. Just some people have opened their gifts. And some people have packed them away and are afraid to open them because I don't feel worthy. And that's my main concern with all of you. You must feel worthy to open them. And therefore, you need to start developing selfishness. And the selfishness I would like you to develop is to develop the kind of selfishness where you do not participate with friends or family that restricts your growth. Okay. The structure and belief system that we have created or that you have created within you, because everybody has their own world, you have, we have created imprisonments. We have been Im imprisoned by our thoughts. Our, our uh, judgments. So the very first thing that must go is the judgment. Not only of yourself, but of everyone else. Because if you see everyone as a potential flower, there's no judgment. You just want to give it fertilizer. <laughs> No judgment needed. And how do we give fertilizer? By showing your gifts 
and letting them see how beautiful they are and how it is able to do so. Because most people don't know how. Most people don't have enough self-esteem to do that. So your physical body can be such a delight, a vessel that is full of delight, joy, and freedom. Or it can be a prison with pain, li limitations, and it's a prison. The minute, the minute you begin to open through the heart center, those pains and prisons that you, we have created begin to open up as well. That doesn't mean you'll be only happy. No, not at all. That doesn't mean you don't have pain somewhere. Not at all. But there is one difference. You'll be able to handle it. You'll be able to see it as part of life. You will be able to take it and not be suppressed and imprisoned by it. You'll be able to work with it and get rid of it. And you'll be able to understand why it's there and remove it if you can. Okay. And know that every single pain and negativity that we have and every limitation we have, we have created. And if we have created it, we can uncreate. And you say, no, I didn't create it. My f parents did that. Or this one did that. Or that one did that. No, sorry, you created it because you chose your parents. You chose the situation you were born in. Okay? And you chose them so that you would learn to become the beautiful soul that you are rather than learning the limitations they have put on you. The limitations they have put on you are is for you to see what you need to work on. Anyone who has put a limitation on you and you feel like you're imprisoned by them is showing you what you need to work on because they are a mirror. And they're there to show you what we need to work on. So you have to bless them for being miserable. <laughs> but also separate yourself as much as possible so that you're not in that environment so much. That is what we mean by being unselfish, okay. by being selfish. Right now, in this world, more than ever, and we've spoken about it for many years now, we have more adamantine particles or more prana than any, any time before. There is a change coming, and because of that, we have access to more divine energy. I call them God particles, hmm. because that's exactly what they are. Prana is vital force, vital energy. Without it, we cannot live. They have a molecular structure, and they're throughout our physical body and are needed by our physical body, but we have a more abundance of it. And so we have been given for this time of our, the infinity breath, which means we breathe in through the, through the solar plexus here. We come out the Abdullah Ablongata. As we breathe in, we bring it around and come. As we exhale, we bring it back into the solar plexus with our mind's eye, down through the Muldaha chakra or the base of the spine, bring it into the earth a little bit and then come around again as we inhale, we bring it in here, you inhale, you bring it down. So what this does is two things. One, it brings more prana into your physical body because prana molecules uh, ox piggyback on oxygen. 
But in the infinity breath, it is specifically designed to bring in the these prana molecules because once you think about it, that once you say infinity breath, it's automatic. All other breathing exercises don't have the same effect. You bring it in, and then you take what you need, and this is your ascension chakra, and you bring it over here. That means you're giving it back to Mother Earth what you don't need. And some people, or Nirvana calls it tithing. <laughs> okay, Because it's very simple. We have to bring divine energy down. This is a world of free will. And a world of free will means that nobody can interfere unless you ask. So even God cannot come in and say, no. Isn't that interesting? You have free will. And so if for us to bring down divine energy or prana, or I call them God molecules, to bring them down, I have to make an effort to do so. And then I can share it with the world, with Mother Earth. Because remember, our existence is for one purpose only, to bring the world together, for us to come together, for us to be united, for us to live peacefully. And that includes the plants, the animals, and the humans, and the devils. The human devils. <laughs> okay. So, number one thing start working on being not non judgmental. Very, very important. Very important. Okay. Two, start using the infinity breath. And when you are filled and overfilled with love and light and spirit is your director of life, because spirit should be the director of our life rather than ego. And you can see what ego will do. It has done all the negative things in the world. Okay. Because of ego, we have destroyed one another. Because of ego, we do not accept one another. Because of ego, we steal other resources from Mother Earth that belong to everyone. Because of ego, evil exists not because of your divine self. But everyone has the energy of divine self. And the energy doesn't say, I have to use it for good or evil. The energy is just energy. It's neutral. And because you have such an abundant amount of energy available to you, if you use it in, and direct it, it can be directed towards your positive or towards the negative. That's why somebody like Hitler has that much power over such a huge amount of people. Okay. Because once you set your mind to it, you can achieve it. Because you have all that divine energy. But you need to set your mind to it and you need to take action. Not just mental action saying, I want. No, I will. Action. Once you're filled and overflowing with love and light and have the spirit as your director, your life experience no longer worry about getting your share. You won't be worried about getting your share of love, wealth, and respect or validation. Once you have that, you don't need the validation. You will have enough. There will be synchronicities will begin to happen. And you will have enough 
You will not have an overabundance, but you will have enough. You will be comfortable, but there will be no greed. Okay? And you will have the access to the riches and virtues and talents that are your divine birthright. Remember, this is your divine birthright. And that's why you need to work about the uh, uh, being selfish and start working on, on growing and fertilizing the flower within you, the divine individual within you, the beautiful individual within you, you must develop. But that doesn't mean you put someone else down to do it. You don't step on others to get up there. That doesn't work. This is what we've been taught in society. No. No. You must respect them but understand that they are on their spiritual path. And they have to do it themselves. And that you cannot. You can only be an inspiration by your development. So be careful. That's why I said judgment is the number one. And it's very difficult not to judge. Of course it's difficult not to judge. But discernment is different from judgment. Okay? You still have to have discernment. Now, I would give you a something to say that speeds up this process, according to Archangel Michael. And I'll repeat it a couple of times. And this you could say in the morning, or when you have put your mind into an alpha state, or when I say to you, you know, a positive affirmation, whatever. I now place my ego self under the control of my higher self and through our unified efforts, henceforth we will celebrate only beauty, harmony, balance within and around us. With other words, your ego self and your higher self work together. Remember, they have to work together on this planet. I now place my ego self under the control of my higher self. And we both will work together henceforth to create only beauty, harmony, and balance within and around us. What a beautiful affirmation. Remember, what you think you will become. What you think you will make happen. The more powerful your thoughts are with an emotional feeling behind it, a feeling of joy or energy or feeling this could work, the faster things will happen. And so, with other words, you are appreciating your ego self and you're asking your ego self and your higher self to work together. You're not putting down your ego self and saying, you've done nothing but bad food for me because <laughs> you're not, you have caused my addictions. You have caused me to be, gain weight. You have caused me not to do my yoga every morning. No. Let's get together and let's make harmony Let's make balance within ourselves and for other ones around us. Isn't that a beautiful thought? And you, it doesn't matter how you say it. It's just the thought. But the more you think it, the more it will become part of you. Okay? So, so then it, what will happen, your higher self or your soul or your spirit, will begin to start directing your life. And then once that happens, you will see s small synchronicities, but you have to be aware because you can bypass them so easily. And you will get nudgings 
from through intuition. Your intuition is what brings the higher self or your soul self through to you. It's called intuition. The gut feelings. Did you know that we have more neurotransmitters in the gut than we do in the brain? That's our th second brain. That's intuition. That's when we get fed through. But that can only happen if you start opening the heart center because it has to pass through here, through here, through here, to here. So the heart has to start being opened. Okay? So, now, You will begin to tap into your sacred mind through the sacred heart. What is your sacred mind? Your sacred mind has all the gifts and has the beautiful flowers in it and all your gifts. And do you don't just have one kind of flower. You have a lot of gifts. Okay? Because we live in the many places. We live in our job, we live in our family life, we live as a brother, we live as a sister, we live as a child, we live as a parent. We have many gifts, and all of those gifts we took with us, and they need to be explored. Okay? And then, once you open your heart, your sacred mind will begin to, you will be able to access the knowledge you need to explore those gifts. Because with every gift comes knowledge. And even though you might not have the knowledge, then the, your sacred mind begins to filter out some knowledge. Okay. But that cannot be done with a mind that is fickle and running around. It has to go into an alpha state. All right. And so, envision the perfect world you would like to create. Envision the perfect world you would like to create. Not the ego world you would like to create with a lot of money and so forth. <laughs> okay. And once you envision that, allow yourself to, ta to allow spirit to give you the nudgings so that you can work towards it because spirit will give you the nudgings to work towards it. All you have to do is want it. And then once you want it, you're allowing the other sources outside of this physical realm in a different dimension, but it's still right around us, to give you the nudgings so that you can go that direction. Got that? So ask, what did I ask? Not, do not judge others and absolutely stop judging ourselves. Two, ask your ego to become together rather than trying to possess your spirit, the spirit and ego to work together. And three, start doing the infinity breath so that you will have more energy and more prana within you so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. Got that? All right. You're all nodding. That means you're okay with it. Okay. So I can own you home. <laughs> oh. Shanti, Shanti, oh.